morning, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for the, with this honor to present the first paper in this series based on the Project Domestic Violence Survey. Uh, this is a joint work with uh, Lev Lubovsky from Baroque, Alexander Grigorian from uh, American University of Armenia, and Norberto Pignati from ISET. Um, uh, and of course, the inspiration for the original idea also came from Jasper. So thank you very much, Jasper, for your uh, for everything. And um, um, so. Um, uh, the title of the paper, Perceptions of Violence and Their Socioeconomic Determinants, Comparative Analysis. Um, so first of all, um, uh -huh, okay, oops, all right. All right, okay, I got it. <laughs> um, so uh, the first question we have to... Yes, I need to Yeah, okay. <laughs> Uh, the first, uh, the first question we need to ask is, uh, well, uh, how do perceptions matter? Um, and of course, we know that uh, intimate partner violence phenomena is uh, multifaceted. So there are physical, uh, both physical and psychological forms uh, that have been recognized, and it's really conceptualized as a um, uh, as a form of um, uh, coercive pattern of behavior uh, that is uh, meant to establish power con control over the victim. So um, any systematic acts of physical as well as psychological pressure and restrictions um, um, have been recognized in the literature as a form of, uh, of intimate partner violence. Uh, but the logical chain of IPV, we can think of you know, starting from perceptions. First, you have to form uh, uh, a perception of whether or not a certain act uh, is uh, is violence. Uh, that is followed by attitudes, whether um, uh, whether you tolerate uh, this uh, this violent, this kind of behavior, whether you justify it, uh, and then the next step is action. So committing or not committing, uh, seeking help for the victim, getting involved. Uh, with the help. So perceptions are really at the basis of this, uh, of this logical chain, but the literature focuses mostly on the latter two links. Um, so the determinants of um, IPV perceptions uh, receive far less attention in the literature. And this is where our paper steps in. So um, uh, socioeconomic determinants of IPV, what does literature have to say? Well, um, starting from the bottom of this slide, we, uh, we know that um, the correlates such as low education, lower social status, unemployment, low income, uh, are shown to correlate with both the incidence of uh, intimate partner violence and higher justification of ICD. Other, um, uh, other factors such as gender and age uh, are a bit more controversial. So for example, uh, as far as gender, some studies reported gender symmetry in the incidence of IPV, uh, while um, it is recognized that women are far more likely to sustain injuries, uh, physical injuries, as a result of IPV. Then as far as attitudes, in relation to the very first paper that was presented here, um, some studies have shown that women actually tend to justify IPV more. But again, there is a great variation among countries or groups of countries. Um, so age, once again, um, results are not consistent, uh, consistent as far as attitudes. Some studies show higher justification of IPV among older adults, while in some groups of countries, actually uh, um, younger people, uh, So again, you know, variation is um, uh, is there. Um, interesting. Some interesting results have been shown for social capital or trust uh, and IPV. Um, the evidence showing um, tendency to show an increase of social increase in social capital decreases the likelihood. But again, I mean, it's um, um, sometimes not consistent. So um, it could be that in some neighborhoods where there is a great degree of trust, that these neighborhoods are knit together by more um, sort of um, uh, patriarchal and uh, um, uh, more conservative values, especially in the um, in um, 
some cultures or groups of countries. So this will be interesting also from the perspective of our paper. Um, Okay, so uh, basically you have seen already what, uh, what Mikal presented. Uh, the, there are 15 questions related to the perception of violence um, that range from beating causing severe physical harm uh, to, to prohibition of dresses one likes. And so we um, uh, divide this, uh, so when, when you answer yes to one of these questions, you receive the score of one. So the maximum score you could receive is 15 if you perceive everything as uh, well as a form of violence. Um, but if you say no, or you refuse to answer, or do not know, you receive a score of zero. So sometimes uh, people drop their do not know answers or refuse to answer, but we decided not to because uh, these are really not random. So these are, um, there are some, um, um, we are doing an exercise to show that uh, they have some other correlates. Mm. So in the group of physical violence, we identified four questions, um, uh, and we can show we can see that almost all countries in the sample uh, have high um, uh, perception of physical violence. Uh, but again, with some uh, with some countries um, higher and some countries lower. So you can see Georgia, Latvia, Poland, and Sweden. They are kind of form uh, this uh, group, uh, one group, which is interesting because Georgia is one of the countries with a more conservative culture and actually the, with the lowest gender equality in, in this group based on the uh, UN um, gender equality index. Um, but emotional violence, we can see a bit more variation here. Uh, Armenia, Belarus, uh, Russia among the lowest and once again, Sweden, Georgia, Latvia, Poland uh, among the um, the other, um, the higher group. Um, so um, restrictions on uh, restrictions as violence. So in this group, we have things like locking partner in the room, apartment, the house, prohibition to communicate with friends and relatives, and so on. Prohibition to dress as one likes. So these are not really emotional or physical. Something in between. And <clears throat> here you can see that. Uh, you can also observe that there is a high difference between men and women that are um, perceived uh, in the perception of, this, uh, of these restrictions as violence. Um, so once again, you know, Armenia, Russia, um, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. So, um, our, and so this is, uh, you know, not to be intimidated by this table. I will not spend too much time on it. Just a bird's eye view of our models and the regressors that we are using, all the variables. So you can see from here uh, I, I, uh, uh, that we used age uh, as one of the um, variables in our regressions, uh, gender, uh, female versus male, higher uh, the education. Uh, variable is there. There's also employment variable, uh, number of children, urban versus rural, trust in others. Um, bad environment uh, refers to uh, people reporting some noise or pollution in their environment, whereas bad social environment was crime in the neighborhood. And then there are country effects for, so we contrasted in our models, Sweden, for all three types of restriction, for all three types of violence, and a group of transition countries. Um, so um, this was really done to see what is the difference between Sweden, which is the country with the highest gender equality um, in our group and also in Europe, uh, and uh, the, our uh, transition economy. So what uh, what uh, what some interesting things emerge from here? So first of all, age. Okay, um, we can see that um, uh, younger people in transition economies, younger people uh, tend to be more sensitive to all types of violence. And the reference group is uh, 45 to 64 years old. And it really makes sense, for example, that um, uh, adults older than 65 in the physical uh, violence group, they are actually less sensitive than our reference group. Um, but while this is not uh, the case um, always in Sweden. 
Um, another interesting point, uh, point here is the difference between female and male. So being female um, indicates higher sensitivity to violence in all countries. Uh, um, it's very consistent. Um, but the magnitudes of these effects are also interesting. So you can, for example, um, see, oh, okay, uh, you can, for example, see that, um, um, well, um, mm, well, not, not here, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, yeah, I, uh, somehow I don't show this slide, but um, yeah, the, the magnitudes uh, in, um, uh, in some countries like uh, Georgia are closer uh, uh, to uh, the, the difference between females and males are uh, um, uh, higher for Armenia and for um, um, uh, and lower for Georgia, which is again um, not very consistent because Georgia and Armenia are closer culturally and they're in the same region. Um, then, uh, okay, uh, just a second. So this is, yeah, employment, an interesting variable. So employment, once again, for Sweden doesn't matter much, employment status in terms of perceptions of violence, but for transition countries, it matters a lot. Uh, and in fact, for physical um, types of violence, uh, it's more consistently, when we run regressions in individual countries, it's uh, more consistently uh, significant for all countries in our transition sample. So Ukraine, Latvia, uh, Belarus, uh, but emotional uh, and um, restrictions are the significance here are driven by Georgia and Russia mostly. So not other countries In other countries is less significant. Um, also, um, yeah, trust in others is another interesting variable. You can see that it's very important in transition economies but not in Georgia and Armenia. This is once again comes to this, uh, 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 this uh, literature where they say that neighborhoods where you can see more trust can also be tied together with more sort of patriarchal and more uh, conservative values. So there is less perception, less sensitivity to, to violence. And this may be the case in particular in uh, Georgia and Armenia. Um, and uh, finally, the determinants of country uh, perception, uh, violence perception, country effects. So this was done for the group of transition countries, and Poland really is the reference country here. Um, so Poland is omitted, and the, the other countries are arranged in the order from uh, least uh, equal in gender, least gender equality to the greatest gender equality on the UN index. So. Um, but the interesting things, uh, you can see that Georgia, which is the least equal, gender equal country in this sample, also is the closest to Poland um, in terms of, uh, well, pr practically all um, coefficients, uh, and Poland, which is the highest in this group in terms of gender equality. But um, the highest coefficient, uh, the highest difference is between Russia and uh, Poland, which is Russia is in the middle kind of, uh, of gender equality index. Um, so these are, uh, yeah, these are some of the things that we have observed and I think I'm running, running out of time. So I, uh, I will wrap up. Um, uh, essentially what, uh, uh, what the takeaways uh, from, um, from, this, uh, from this study so far is that the level of gender equality uh, as measured by the gender equality index of the UN, uh, doesn't have uh, doesn't consistently correlate with the awareness of perceptions of violence. So it may be uh, that Georgia, for example, where the, a lot of attention has been paid to uh, um, IPV on the media, it's uh, very very often in the news. So it may be that. from the TV and from the media, rather than uh, you know, just the state of the gender equality policy. So another extension of this paper could be to look at the media reports <clears throat> of um, gender-based violence um, and to see how it correlates with perceptions. So we're in countries where we could see you know, more, more media coverage, there could be a better awareness of what is going on. 
Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, uh, another two interesting facts that we also to highlight is that higher education, for example, doesn't always uh, um, mean that uh, people are more sensitive to gender-based violence. This is especially true for Georgia and Armenia, where higher education has been so prevalent. So basically people uh, receive higher education by default almost, uh, and uh, that doesn't really uh, translate into higher uh, higher perceptions. Well, uh, higher education matters for all other countries in the transition group. Okay, I think I'll stop here, um, and just for the uh, sake of time, and uh, we can continue the discussion later. Thank you. Thank, thanks a lot, Yasya. Uh, and